Hello and welcome back to another TJA economics video where today we're going to be looking at a year 12 microeconomics topic. We're going to be looking at externalities, which of course is a form of market failure and it's a form of market failure caused by the price mechanism not accounting for external costs or external benefits. So I think it's important, first of all, that we actually look at what is market failure so we can then look at how externalities cause market failure. So market failure, we can imagine, right, that in society, in economics, with our scarce resources, there always has to exist a, an optimum allocation of resources, one allocation of resources that maximises welfare in society. And that is the optimum allocation because it's, it's the best, it's the most efficient allocation. And so market failure is when that free market fails to allocate those resources efficiently, leading to lower welfare than we would expect at that optimum allocation. And so the question is, how do externalities cause that then? How do externalities cause that inefficient allocation of resources? Take, for example, um, an activity like smoking. Whenever you smoke, there are external costs of smoking. There are costs, spillover costs, onto third parties every time someone smokes a cigarette. For example, secondhand smoke on people around you. You may well cause them to have health issues. You may well cause increased lung cancer, etc., etc. You may well require more socialised health care than a normal person because of your smoking. That may increase tax for others, and therefore there's an increased burden on the healthcare system because of your smoking. There may well be air pollution, for example. There's plenty of external costs of smoking. And so we can say that smoking causes external costs. And as a result, the social cost of smoking, i.e. the cost to society as a whole, is greater than the cost to the smoker. And so social cost is greater than private cost because of the external cost. Let's, let's try and put that into a little chain of reasoning then and say why externalities cause market failure in terms of smoking. So, an external cost is a spillover effect, a negative one, to a third party that the price mechanism does not account for. Likewise, an external benefit is a positive spillover effect that the price mechanism doesn't account for. We assume in economics that all agents, as in consumers, firms, etc., are rational and act in their own self-interest. Therefore, we can assume that agents will not care about any external costs or benefits they cause. For example, a firm that pollutes the environment will not care about the damage they do. That's an external cost. Because of this, they only care about the private costs themselves. And as a result, they will overproduce their good or service. Because of that overproduction, it means the firm, and therefore society as a whole, is allocating and using too many resources to the production of that good or service. Maybe there are machines that are going towards making cigarettes that actually, in the optimal allocation we spoke about earlier, those machines would not be making cigarettes, they'd be making something else. That's the misallocation of resources, and as a result, we lose welfare and we get market failure. And of course, we can show this on a diagram. We have a negative externality diagram here. We have our axes, cost benefit on the vertical axes, quantity on the horizontal axes. We have our demand curve. Our demand curve here is pretty simple because we're talking about costs, not benefits. And so we have our demand curve in which the marginal private benefit is equal to the marginal social benefit. We have here our supply curve. Notice, supply in this diagram is equal to the marginal private cost. As we said earlier, producers only care about the private cost to them. And so it's for that reason that the supply curve is the marginal private cost curve. But we said, didn't we? We said that actually there's a social cost to smoking. And so there's a, in effect, there is a separate supply curve, one for when we take into account all of the external costs. And so the vertical distance between those two curves is the external cost. You can see when we take into account the external cost, the supply curve shifts inwards and is greater. And so 
we end up with two different equilibria. And notice how I've labelled the price and quantity. I've labelled them P pri and Q pri, speaking for private. This is the equilibrium that we end up at. Because as I said, the producer here only cares about the private costs. And so that equilibrium there in red is where the private cost curve meets the private benefit curve. That's the amount, that's the price and the quantity that the producer is going to produce at in a free market. However, as we said, there's a different allocation of resources, an optimal allocation of resources, hence why I've labelled it P-opt and Q-opt. And you can see, at that optimal allocation of resources, we actually have a higher price, i.e. you pay more for a cigarette, and we actually produce fewer of them. There's a lower quantity of cigarettes. And so we could say that there is dead weight loss caused by the overproduction of cigarettes. As you can see, Q pri is greater than Q opt. We are producing more cigarettes than society would optimally like us to. And so the difference between Q pri and Q opt is overproduction, and that causes dead weight loss, as you can see with that red triangle there. And so it can work the other way too. Let's look at education. There are positive externalities or external benefits to education. There will be greater overall productivity in society, raising growth, raising living standards, raising incomes across society. You in the future, if you are more educated, may well then have less reliance on the welfare state, meaning the government can lower its spending and lower its taxes, benefiting other people. In general, society may be better off for you being more educated. And so as we can see, there are significant external benefits of education. This means that the social benefit, i.e. the benefit society gains from your education, is greater than the private benefit that you gain from your education. And so because of the external benefit of education, the social benefit is greater than the private benefit. And again, we can do a chain of reasoning. Let's do it. An external benefit is a positive spillover effect to a third party that the price mechanism doesn't account for. We assume in economics that agents are rational, act in their own self-interest. Therefore, we assume that agents don't care about external benefits they cause. For example, when I go to the gym, another activity that has positive external benefits, I don't think about the positive benefits I cause for others. Maybe because I'm healthier, I use the NHS less. That's a positive external benefit. And because I only care about the private benefits to me of going to the gym, I will under-consume that good or service. And so in the UK, maybe, we have under-consumption of education, under-consumption of gymming and running and all those kinds of things. As a result, and because of the under-consumption, firms and society will allocate too few resources to the production of that good or service. Maybe there are buildings that in an optimal society would be gyms. When in fact, because we under-consume gyms, they're doing something else. And so that's resources not doing what we optimally would like them to, meaning we have welfare loss and as a result, market failure. And again, we can show positive externalities on a diagram. Again, we have cost, benefit and quantity on the axes and we have our supply curve. Note this time, because we're talking about the benefits, it's our supply curve that's simple. S equals marginal private costs equals marginal social cost. And this time, we have our demand curve, which you'll see is the marginal private benefit. As we said, when I as a consumer make my decisions, I only care about the benefits to me. And so in effect, my marginal private benefit is my demand curve. We then have the marginal social benefit curve, which is when we include that external benefit. And you'll see something similar to what happened before. We have an external benefit, that vertical difference, which means that we have our initial private equilibrium there at P pri and Q pri. But look at this, the social optimum equilibrium of gymming, of education is different. You can see that P opt is higher, i.e. we would rather people were willing to pay more for that. We would like people to be more willing and able to buy a gym membership. And Q opt is higher. We want more gym memberships. We want more people completing education. 
And so, because Qopt is higher than Qpri, that causes dead weight loss. And we have under production, under consumption. As we said, we would like resources to be producing gyms and education, etc. But they're not. And so they are not optimally allocated. And so we have dead weight loss. And so, to summarise, external costs and benefits are ignored by the price mechanism and rational economic agents, leading to market failure. External costs, think smoking, polluting companies, etc., cause overproduction and consumption of goods and services because consumers and firms don't consider them. A rational firm does not consider the external cost of, of pollution. Therefore, when they make their supply decisions, they're not thinking about it. External benefits cause underproduction and consumption of goods and services for a similar reason. When I go to the gym, when I'm doing something with external benefits, I'm not rewarded for and I don't consider the external benefits that I create. Therefore, I underconsume. Therefore, resources will not be allocated optimally by the market mechanism. As a result, we see dead weight loss and market failure. So if you've enjoyed this video, and I hope I've done a good job of explaining how externalities can cause market failure, please do follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and feel free to like and subscribe on the video, and come back for more videos about economics at another time.